you will not have a mental health crisis this winter. I am speaking it into existence. Even if you don't believe it, I will say it for you and I will say it again. You will not have a mental health crisis this holiday period. I'm someone who experiences depression, anxiety, and psychosis as a symptom of the two. And I have been diagnosed since August of 2014. So over the last few years, I have been trialing and erroring a lot at trying to figure out how to navigate the holiday period. Because unfortunately for me, I experience what is known as seasonal affective disorder. What is it? It's basically a depression that is attached to the seasonal changes. So it often happens around the fall time and it goes all the way through the winter and alleviates itself maybe in the spring, early summertime. However, seasonal affective disorder is not just limited to those months of the year. You can also have it from spring, early summer, all the way through to the fall, even to the winter. And if you're like me, unfortunately, you experience it all year round so that's why I thought that I should make this series because I feel like there aren't enough people who look and sound like me who talk about mental health so let me just describe to you what exactly that it is that I go through because I think it's important to discuss exactly the steps that we experience because some people might not feel exactly how I feel but there might be certain stages in my depression that you might relate to so I'm gonna I'm gonna put it all out there I'm gonna explain to you what I go through in hopes that maybe you can understand how to protect yourself at this time be sure to come back and check for more videos because I'm doing a series on how to navigate the holiday period and I'm going to go into detail of what I go through and how I cope to get through this period. It's something that's taken me years. Like I said, I was diagnosed in 2014 and since then, I was trying so many different things. One year I went away for Christmas. Another year I tried to go to a friend's house for Christmas. I tried to change things around, but what I always found was that because all I was doing was removing myself from an environment, I wasn't actually doing things that nurtured exactly what I needed. So what always ended up happening is, although I may have changed the routine of the things that I did during the holiday period, I still found myself in crisis for the rest of the winter. And that's not a great place to be because being in a mental health crisis, it's so tumultuous and it's not only difficult for the person going through it but the people around them their loved ones because they also don't know how to navigate what's going on because unfortunately poor mental health is not something that people can easily empathize with because every single person's experience is different which brings me to the first and only tip that i have for you in this video boundary setting but before i get into too much detail i just want to give you a little tip if you're going to be watching my videos about mental health, I highly recommend that you get yourself a notepad, piece of paper, anything to write on. And even if you don't feel like writing, that's totally fine. This is what this video is for. You can always come back to this video, but I highly recommend writing it out because writing your feelings really does help you navigate all these problems that you have and the reason why i'm suggesting this is because in order for you to boundary set the first step you need to do is to identify what your limits are how do you identify your limits get your notepad and list every single thing pertaining to that specific holiday period that stresses you out and let it all out even if it's something as silly as, oh, I always have to go pick up this person from the train station and take them to go caroling or something like that. Anything, just write everything down that stresses you out. It's really helpful because it takes it out of your brain and it's now on a piece of paper. And if you're like me, I am a serial worrier. I worry all the time. I'm constantly just thinking over and over and over and over. And I find that when I let it out on a piece of paper, it gives me this form of catharsis, not only from the idea itself or the thing that's worrying me, but from the process of the constant worrying. So I'm going to give you my example and hopefully that can help you understand this process and how to do it. For me, one of the things that I really struggle with with the holiday period is that there is so many 
things to do, so many activities. There's the caroling, there's going to see the show, there's this, there's this game, there's let's go buy presents. Like it's a lot. And not only that, I get very overstimulated during Christmas shopping because all the lights, all the music, all the people, it's, I've had panic attacks while Christmas shopping. And so the whole point of this is to try and mitigate those things. So think back to a time, whatever holiday period it is you are doing this for, where you felt very stressed out to the point that it affected your mental health. And if you're doing it along with me right now, pause this video, write down everything that you're feeling and then come back to it. So now you've written down all the things that make you feel stressed out, that make you feel anxious, that make you feel sad, whatever it is that stresses you out to the point of having a mental health crisis. All I'm going to ask you to do next is to pick two or three things that you think are manageable to start with. Right next to that, write down the most unrealistic preference that you have. So for me, if I had seven events to go to during the Christmas period, my unrealistic expectation would be I never have to go to any of them. I don't go to a single one. I'm just going to lay in my bed and do nothing. Now, because we now have the worrying issue and unrealistic expectation over here, we now have this great spectrum of where we could fall in order to not only meet our needs, but also meet the needs of the people around us. Because whether we like it or not, the holiday periods are usually where families and friends come together, the people around you gather around and you all spend time together. So as much as you might want to stay in bed for the entire holiday period, that's not possible. There are people who are gonna wanna see you, there are people who are traveling to see you. So you do have to make some form of effort. So now this is the exciting part and this is where the results can vary according to each person. Along that spectrum, decide where you think you will be happy to land at. Not on either ends, find somewhere on that spectrum where you'll be. So maybe for me, okay, I had seven things to go to. Maybe I'll go to three. Or maybe I go to one, see how I feel, then go to another, see how I feel, then go to another. Or go to the one at the beginning or one at the end. It's, it is whatever it is you want it to be. You have to be very, very reflective. Think really long and hard. Don't make this a quick decision. Sometimes you can even write it down and maybe come back to it at a later time. And the reason why I'm suggesting you do this exercise is because the more you do it, the more you become more in tune with where your preferences are along that spectrum. Whether it's the spectrum of events or the spectrum of anything else, you are able to actually stay in tune in exactly what it is that you prefer for yourself. You might have decided something that's on the more unrealistic end of the spectrum. You also have to now ask yourself, does this live in reality? Is this a realistic thing? And if it's not, Let's do it again. Go back a step and try again. The more you do this, the more you'll find that you will land on something that you are happy with, makes your needs get met, but also makes the people around you appreciate you too. So the second part of boundary setting is having to communicate that boundary to the people around you, whether it's your family, your friends, whoever. Anybody who falls into that group of people, you need to communicate this boundary to. First, you thank them, obviously, because not everybody is invited to parties, so you better be grateful, right? <laughs> thank you for inviting me. However, I won't be able to make it this year. If they don't take it well, they hear that and they still don't take it well. Because a lot of times when people are told that things are going to change, they don't necessarily like that. They like things to stay the same and that's totally understandable. But the goal here is to boundary set. So you have to always remind yourself with each response you get from your loved ones, Ask yourself if this boundary is shifting or not, because you need to keep that boundary where it's at. That's the hardest part, maintaining that boundary, because it's easy for us to then say, oh, maybe I'll come for a couple hours. Why are you going for a couple hours? You don't want to be there. Don't go, because you know what's going to happen. They're not going to be there when you're struggling, right? So it's not worth it. And if they keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and you see that boundary moving, then I've got some goodness for you. That's 
that's your out. That's your out. If the person keeps pushing and pushing and pushing, completely disrespecting that boundary, then you do not have to respect what they are saying because they're disrespecting you. So you're out. You're not going to go. Um, you know what? You keep pushing my boundary. I wanted to come to two of your seven parties, but because you want me to come to all seven, I can't do it. So I'm not coming to any of them. And they might hum and ha and whatever it may be, that's on them. That's their reaction, their choice. Don't let that affect how you feel because our goal here is to make sure that the rest of the winter or however many months it is post this event, you are protected. You are in a good space. And if they don't like that, it's very simple. Just tell them, I am not going to have a mental health crisis. So this is the first in a series of videos that I'm going to be making about the holiday period. I'm mostly making these videos for myself because a lot of times when I'm in poor mental health, it's very hard for me to remember these techniques. So really, I'm making this video for myself. I'd like to also add that boundary setting is applicable in all aspects of life. It doesn't just start with the holiday period. Maybe you can start practicing with the holiday period, but it applies to everything. It applies to your work, it applies to school, it applies to friendships, relationships. Learn to boundary set and you will find that people will have an understanding of who you truly are. And not only that, they will also have an understanding of your mental health. And it's so important that people understand how mental health works because so many people are misinformed or have an idea of what they think mental health is, but it's individual. It's different with every single person. So the more you set those boundaries, the more you're able to continuously stay on that spectrum of where your limits are and also communicating that to the people around you. And you find that after a few years, a few tries, a few holiday periods of doing this, people will now understand. And you even have your loved ones advocating for you because they now have a little bit of an understanding of what it is that you go through. So take care of yourselves and I hope that you have a great holiday period. I'll see you in my next video.